Shire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so here's the vineyard. Uh, it's always funny um, when people come here who haven't been here in uh, maybe five years or so. There's some people who have come when we first started and are now here um, now, and they're always blown away because. When we first started, it was literally just these few rows. This is Chardonnay over here. Um, and uh, and so the first planted was a Chardonnay and the Sable Blanc, which is over there. Uh, and then slowly we've just grown over the years and uh, we acquired that hillside, I think it's about, gosh, seven years ago, maybe-ish? Yeah, maybe eight years. Um, uh, a hybrid is where you will cross two different species, so an American species and a European species, and then you create a new kind of hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the Frenchman did that, and he made thousands of different crossings, but then he picked the best ones, and the best ones that he picked are called French-American hybrids, right? So we grow a lot of French-American hybrids. Uh, the Saval is a French-American hybrid. Uh, we also have um, Really, they're called American hybrids. Uh, so, like the Chardonnay, that's a very recent hybridization, right? So we've had Chardonnay. We like Chardonnay. Well, and City Winery winemaker was talking about that. I remember she was, yeah. Yeah, no. and the name, I'm like, okay, but it's it it, it was developed at Cornell University, so they they uh, did they uh, I believe they crossed Sauvignon yeah. Blanc yeah, with sure. Chardonnay, and they Save named it Chardonnay. Blanc. Okay. Yeah, uh, which I love Chardonnay. We do a Chardonnay, like a cla like a California style Chardonnay, you know, barrel fermented, full mallow, um, pretty high alcohol. It was where we grew up. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the farmhouse. Uh, we outgrew that tasting room like five years ago. So, um, so that's where the tasting room. Right now, because of COVID, we're we're just outside operations only, so there's a back porch that we actually just sell the wine off of. Oh, cool. And we do flights so people can take them off. And, uh, now, during this COVID time, have you started some kind of like selling procedures or anything that you think that you'll keep once COVID is over? Like, has any kind of ideas that you've created during COVID actually been like, ah, oh, that's a really good idea. We should oh, do that yeah. more often. Oh, yeah, tons. Like, uh, well, uh, like, the paddles, for instance, for the wine flights, I mean, people love them and people can take them off and, you know, do the tasting themselves. And so we're definitely just going to keep that even when COVID's over. Cool. Um, and then we'll still have private, ta uh, we'll still have, you know, face-to-face -face tastings, but it's going to be uh, private tastings and by reservation. Yeah. And that way we can kind of up the quality of that tasting and have it be more personal. Yeah, and also we have, you know, the flights for people uh, who just want to come and just drink and have a good time and maybe don't want that, you know, super, um, you know, um, intimate wine tasting, if that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. So, were you, like, like, I want to know about the, the decision of, like, when you decided to come do the wine thing. Were you guys, you were together at that point? Mm -hmm. We were. We were actually theater majors. Yeah. And so that okay. was the life path we were on. Um, and Peter, he doesn't like to brag about it, but he got a Fulbright scholarship to study in Nepal. Oh, oh wow. wow. We went to Nepal for a year after he graduated and did theater work, theater for social change work over there mostly, um, and had a great time, met a lot of people, but did a lot of self-discovery along the way and just realized that this is really where we wanted to be. So. Where'd y'all go to school undergrad? Um, uh, Coastal Carolina. Okay, so um, BC people. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Gotcha. So was that a very easy transition coming from Nepal to here? Like. Uh, uh, no. No? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, it was, uh, like, we came back, um, I was in the wine a little bit, but then I came back and actually went to hard school for winemaking. Uh, so went to school, um, and really, really just delved in and got into it. Um, yeah, and it's history ever since. It's pretty... I've, I've fallen in love with it. It's really, right. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I grew up in the industry too. Right. I hated working in the vineyard, but I worked a lot in the vineyard, <laughs> yeah. So, like, as a kid, I hated it, but now I love it, which, which I feel like that's how it goes, usually. So, you all do, really are doing all this, like, together, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. We work together all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we are, too. We work together, too, yeah. so. You know how it goes. Yes. It's, like, yeah. a lot of benefits, and you just have to learn to communicate. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. So was it 
How long have your parents had this? Like um, yeah, so my dad, uh, he lived in Italy for about 10 years, um, and then um, that's where he kind of fell in love with wine, yeah. uh, and then he wanted to try to try and do this. Uh, he's, uh, he's native to Atlanta, and then um, he's, uh, he knew of this area, and he thought that this would be a, a really good place to start a vineyard. I would never put down someone who's starting out because there's it's so complicated there's so much you know i'm i have a benefit is like i didn't i didn't start a vineyard you know what i mean that's why it's very generational because it takes so long right you know what i mean it takes so long it's like like if i was if i had to go start a vineyard i would have a panic attack like, oh my God, <laughs> so much work I'm, so i'm very very fortunate that you know that this was here and so it's just you know continuing it forward now yeah that's so. really awesome yeah. yeah, I love the history. A, I think it's an Italian saying that is, you don't plant a vineyard for yourself. You don't plant it for your kids. You plant it for your grandkids. Mm. Wow. That's I love true. That. Yeah. That's really cool. Okay, we are here with Peter and Jess at Crane Creek Vineyards in Georgia. This place is just, yeah, can't say enough about it. It's beautiful. They're also a duo like TJ and I. They're married. Um, the winemaker's here. Crane Creek Vineyards, and we're just going to go through some of these wines today. So, uh, what do you have? Sure. Starting off? Yeah. Um, so, we're trying a handful of wines. Uh, we're first going to start uh, with our Gruner Veltliner. Uh, this is our 2019. Um, really, really fun wine. Uh, it's going to have that classic, you know, white pepper that you get from a Gruner, uh, but it's also going to have um, some nice warm climate types of aromas. So, some ginger and be like nice. honey to ginger and stuff like that. It's a really, really fun wine. Uh, so we're gonna crack into it. So is this wine like a complicated, complex wine or? I think so, yeah. I think there's a lot of layers to it. Um, the color is like almost completely clear. Yes, it's very, very clear. It smells awesome. It's <laughs> good then. Yeah, super uh, spicy. Um, I love Gruner. Gruner's one of my favorite grapes. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure there's anybody else growing Gruner in Georgia right now. Um, I think there's like one more. Red. Yeah, Red Hook. No, Red or Tail. Red Tail, excuse in me. In yeah. Blairsville, they planted it. Um, I don't know if they have any bottled yet, but this I is like blowing me away. I like literally just took a sip and I was like, this That's is one of the best wines we tried actually on our trip. Thank you. Like hands wow, down, thank you. hands down. This is a really good vintage. This is 2019, so last year was an amazing year in the mm -hmm. vineyard. Very warm, dry, especially towards the end of the harvest season. So everything got super ripe. Yeah. It's just really full, lots of like glycerol on the palate, has a nice weight on the palate. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you pair for who I would wise with this? Oh gosh, with Gruner, uh, I usually I do it as like an aperitif usually. Okay. I usually start off with it. Um so um just like classic meats, cheeses, charcuterie. Mm. Uh, it has super high acid. I love high acid wines. Uh, so this is definitely yeah. Right he was up my saying alley. that earlier, and I can totally yeah. But it's like high acid in like this really pleasant way. Like people hear high acid, and sometimes yeah. they think it's gonna burn. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This doesn't. This isn't burning my throat at all. It's like very, very nice. Yeah. The uh, like the word that I would use to describe it is zippy. Like it's zippy. Like, zippy. Yeah, you said like, that earlier. Zippy. Exactly. Okay. It's just like shoo, it's like in your mouth, like lightning a little bit. Yeah. So, and sure. that's all that acid, which is really fun. Um, so the labeling, because uh, yes. I, I already noticed the labels are really cool. Oh, so thanks. If you could give kind of like a backstory about Jess can do it. Yeah. She'll be so yeah, this has been my big project over the past year and a half is redoing all of our labels. I worked with an artist um, out of Colorado. She's now based in Arizona, I think. Her name is Megan Bergeron. Never actually met her in person. Just found her stuff online. She's a um, illustrator and graphic artist, and um, we just got with her, kind of told her the story of the vineyard, what we were looking for, um, and she just did all these hand-drawn uh, digital illustrations, um, and they're all. Can you comment on the bottles? Yeah, they're all stuff that's pretty significant to us. Um, so uh, we'll start like the Hellbender. We're gonna try later. Um, this is. A lot of them are based on original artwork um, from a family friend named John Wooden, who um, is a pretty notable folk artist in this area and was a friend of, uh, of the family, mm -hmm. passed away in the earlier 2000s. Um, but uh, he did all of these paintings for us. He actually came up art. with the name Hellbender. Yeah, he did. He actually, he actually he was like, you should name that Hellbender. Like, oh, yeah. 
So we have all of these paintings. We can show you guys some of them later. Um, and a lot of these concepts are based on stuff from his main paintings. And they're very folk art based, farmy stuff um, that really reflects well, it's really the really got a sentimental. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, the imagery yeah. is all very sentimental. Exactly. It's really cool. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the turtle. This was uh, one that he did as well. Um, yeah, the turtles kind of become a symbol in the area. Brasstown Valley Resort uses it on their sign. So Enoda is the name, uh, is a Native American name for Brasstown Valley. Oh, okay. So, which is the highest peak in Georgia. It's the highest peak in Georgia, ah. very close to us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's really um, cool. And the turtle, I don't know if this is true, but apparently um, there is a legend in the area that um, there was a big flood in the valley and that the Native people um, climbed onto a giant turtle. <laughs> that then swam to the top exactly. of Brasstown Gold yeah. uh, during the flood. I don't know if that's actually true, but that's kind of been floating around. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that was actually a Cherokee legend or not. But yeah, <laughs> it seems fun. Yeah, these are these are all bottles. Like if I just saw them on the shelf, they wouldn't they would intrigue me. And as we all know, a lot of people do sometimes buy off of the label. Which yeah. there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Like no, yeah. that's cool. And these are ones if I saw, I'd be like, oh, that's it. A should say something label. about what's inside. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Traumanet is a um, is a hybrid of a gewürztraminer. So if you ever okay, had gewürztraminer, it's going to be slightly sweet, just a little bit of residual sugar, um, and very very floral. So it's going to have lots of floral notes. Wow. Exactly. So it's Jess, we've been talking. Jess was just saying that this is another really good one for Thanksgiving. The last couple of wines we've been trying, we've been talking about that with the holidays coming up. How these would be really really great wines to pair with your meal. Or after your meal. And you know, oh, this boy. one, um, great for different reasons. Really good with poultry, turkey. Um, I actually like this one, tangent from Thanksgiving, with like some Southeast Asian cuisine, like something that Spicy has a little bit of spice. Yeah. Um, both Gabrich Wiener and Traumanet, its cousin descendant, exactly. <laughs> um, pair really well with stuff like that. Stuff with a lot of spices, with a lot going on. Um, and completely stainless steel, no malolactic on this at all. Um, but this is also 2019, so again, very ripe, full, good weight on the palate. Yeah. Very and aromatic. Very, very aromatic, and it's gonna have that slight residual sugar. So if you're if you're looking for something that isn't super, super tart, I would definitely try this um, cause it's, it, because that nice residual sugar kind of balances out that acid, so it's really nice and smooth on the palate. Um, very, very fruity though too. I mean, like a lot of like. I also get like a so like soil. It's a nice smell. Oh yeah, so I think all of our whites have a very mineral quality, and I think it's from like the Georgia clay, personally. The reds too, there's like a, there is a literal iron aspect, because the reason that Georgia clay is red is because of iron. And I, I genuinely think that um, East Coast wines have that aspect in there. There's almost this like, this iron aspect. Isn't there a song, a country song about Georgia clay? It's like, you can find me, something like that. There's a Georgia clay song! I think there is, yeah. But yeah, I yeah, I like that you said it was mineral because that's what we want. That's what. Well, I mean, from tasting these, and y'all probably feel this way too, but they're just really clean. Clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're really yeah. clean, like and refreshing. That's, yeah, I just that that word clean. That's it's a really though. It's wine, like I think. it's yeah. it's just that vibe. It's clean. Like wow. Yeah. So would the keto person like the two whites that we've tried already, as far as the residual sugars go? These I mean, don't so taste. this is so we've actually gone. Uh, so the Gruner uh, is um, bone dry. Like okay, it, it's completely dry. So okay. there's no residual sugar. Okay, the Anoda right at 0. 0.3. So still definitely classified as a dry wine, but um, uh, yeah, there's just a slight residual sugar. Uh, and then uh, this is right about one percent ish. So it's right on the borderline between a dry and an off dry wine. So it's right right on the borderline. So if you're trying to get into more drier wines, the Traminette is my huge recommendation that I would give. Because it's a really great stepping stone into in getting into drier styles. I mean, this is so, it's like pure, clean perfection. And I can just, talking to you, you're, you are this wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's so true. I don't y'all feel yeah. that way. Yeah. Like, that makes me too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just, it's, I, I, it's really special. 
This is really special. Yeah, and you know, and so, wow. and you know, and you saying that, you know, this definitely goes out to all the people here at Crane Creek who work so hard to, you know, you know, from it's not just, that, it's it's like, not just it's us. So, I mean, so it's people. it's you know, it's my parents who started the vineyard. It's you know, it's all of the vineyard crew that work tirelessly every day in the vineyard to get the beautiful fruit that we can then craft in the winery.